Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you? Uh, can I get you guys to introduce yourselves and then tell the guys back home where we are right now, what we're doing here. Okay, so I'm Nikhil. I was part of the TJ Space program for four years. Mm -hmm. And last year, uh, was, last year was my senior year and I was the project manager. So I helped to get our current satellite off the ground and launched. So that was, that's basically what I did. <laughs> Hello, I'm Arush. Um, I was part of it for three years. I, I kind of took a hiatus last year but I've been technically a part of the electronics team and that's mainly what I did three years ago. But I just kind of filled the gaps. I did like orbital stuff, like passive magnetic stuff, just whatever was needed to mm -hmm. get the thing off the ground. Hi, my name's Kareem. I'm also a graduated senior. I've been part of TJ Space program for two years and I was electronics lead. I helped with PCB design, but I also helped around with writing our flight software and also with final assembly. Wow, so you have all got your fingers in like a lot, a lot of different pies. Everyone does a little bit of everything. All the honey pots. So our philosophy, I guess, in trying to take on work is if you are interested in it and if you are dedicated to like doing it, all you gotta do is just say, I wanna do it, and you put in the effort to do it. The learning curve of building a satellite is, as you guys probably know, is extremely, extremely high. So all of us have to work extremely hard to kind of figure these things out, but that's part of the, like, that's part of the fun. So working together, we will often take like try to take on challenges that we have no clue how to do, like PCB design. I don't think anyone really knew how to do when we first started this club. Mm -hmm. Along with the idea that we're building a satellite, how the heck do you assemble something like space grade wise? And so that's yeah, we just choose what we want to do, and then from there we work together, we figure it out. We have help from our mentors, but most of it's just like self learning, self studying, and doing it. Uh, I literally just went and found something I didn't know how to do. And I was like, ooh, that seems cool. And then I went and like engaged myself with that. And I, th and I think that's like the common theme. Um, it's just fun to do. It's something that's completely exotic to us, as Kareem said. And so it's just a blast to sort of go around, find stuff that we don't know, and then figure it out. And you know, at the end, we had a lot of fun. And we also learned something that's going to be useful for us in the future, like PCB design. like analyzing a bunch of research papers um, at 9, 8, 9 p.m. in the night. 9 p.m. is a little late. I know. I think it was uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> I'm trying to make ourselves look a little bit better, but okay, yeah. Stuff like that, it's just fun. It's just helpful, so we do it. Yeah, so I guess my thing to add to this is that like this is one of those things that I think definitely makes our club special. Um, basically, we don't really have, you know, distinct rules like there's not going to be any one person who only ever does this one thing because that's what they're good at basically everyone here is has their fingers in like multiple things you know everyone here has decided has looked at you know something that they've had absolutely no clue about and went hey that's kind of cool i kind of want to learn that like this is just a part of our culture i think so like i think that's one reason why we've been successful i actually want to talk about that culture stuff a little bit more because that was one of the things that brought you guys here to the small sat conference right you did a you had a look at a bunch of other uh school cubesat programs and uh well i guess do you want to do you want to take it from there and explain the kind of the, the research that you did and the, the paper that you presented into other school programs we interviewed six other high schools we reached out to nine and six replied and all of those programs we interviewed and asked, you know, basic questions about how they were running their program and like, you know, how they were doing things, what kind of missions they were taking on and how long it was taking, how much success they were having. And what we found is like general summary would be like, you know, people who use kits have faster mission times than people who don't use kits, which, you know, that's, you know, that's pretty, that's pretty much expected. We also found that a lot of teams have like, you know, a more, foc more of a focus on like a lesson based learning based on the CubeSat. It's like the teacher buys a kit and it's like, and it's this month in science class or this, this yes, semester in exactly. science class, we are building a CubeSat well, yeah. where they work through it like bit by bit and they do each each component and, and pull it together. That's like one of the models that we kind of saw. The other one is that like you have a teacher or an outside mentor, one of the parents of the student team mm -hmm. who basically, you know, is already like into satellites and, you know, they, you know, kind of slowly guide them through it over multiple years to get it done. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's definitely, you know, it's interesting to look at how other people are solving these same problems that we're facing. None of the six teams that we had had like an approach 
that was like the same as another team. Like everyone used a different combination of kits of like commercial off the shelf parts of fabricating stuff themselves. Like they all like had mentors involved in you know some way, mm -hmm. but not in the same way, mm -hmm. right? And so I think it's important to stress that there's no one good solution to building a high school CubeSat program. They yeah. all were able to do something with the approach they wanted to, and they just tailored it to make it fit for them. Our approach was definitely very unique. We were much more inquiry-based rather than the lesson-based that Nikhil talked about. We kind of drove stuff ourselves. We asked mentors questions and they taught us what we needed to know based on our questions, not sort of like using the CubeSat as a tool to sort of teach us about other concepts. The CubeSat was the main focus for us. I think one thing we hope by doing it this way is by having us do the bus and them do the payload. Um, it really forces our high school students to talk to university students and talk to our professors oh, and, yeah. and stuff like that. And it's, they end up building these connections because they have to work together. They can't just go it alone. And I think that's, uh, and, and ditto, like it forces our, um, our PhD students to actually talk to the kids because mm -hmm. it's like, well, we need to do our payload integration. So we need to know what these payloads are actually doing. So it, it kind of forces us to talk to each other a little bit, which is one of the things we really, we really want, we really want to, want to build a stronger connection between our universities and our high schools. So. Yeah, and that is something we saw. A lot of our the teams we interviewed had a very strong connection with Irvine. like, yeah, Irvine had a connection, was it with UC Irvine? Uh, UC Irvine, yeah. Yeah, and then some other one had a connection with Oak Ridge Natural La National oh, yeah, Laboratories. That's cool. Like, and then another one had a connection with the Kennedy Space Center because they're right yeah. there. So it's all just, um, you know, working together with people like colleges or like, people that sort of have done it before. Yeah, people that have but, the experience. Yeah, that's just something we found that was very like significant to a program success. You yeah, you mentioned there was there were some things that successful programs had in common. What is the most important thing uh, that you found that, that a program needs to kind of work and stick around and have a decent shot of building their CubeSat? It was actually a little unexpected, but you know it makes sense when you look at it look back at it in hindsight. It's club culture. It's like, you know, we talked about it a little bit. It's the sort of attitude we have towards the CubeSat, towards just attacking the problems, learning things, just being able to be free and sort of go around and do things. What we noticed in other programs is that the ones that were, uh, out of the ones that were more like student driven and inquiry based, this kind of culture is like, you know, what we saw as the most important part. Um, it's a little bit easier to get a successful, like, you know, successful CubeSat program. Uh, that like you know lasts a long time and keeps going if you've got like a strong you know if you've got mentors and like teachers and a bunch of other people on the outside pushing because you know those people aren't going to go away after four years right mm -hmm. they can keep generating interest and they can keep you know bringing people in and they can keep the program going even if because they even if the original students graduate because they're going to stay around so what we found is they have they do have a bit of an easier time with it um, and in the more student driven cases like it's you know the students have a pretty big responsibility of creating that culture for themselves that like you know makes other people new people want to come into the program and want to join and want to work with us because if you can't do that then after four years your original you know creation team is gone yeah for sure this is like one of the things that in our program specifically is what i believe makes us successful um we definitely have a culture where like people come in wanting to work and loving the work that they do like one one thing that I think is you know pretty interesting about our club is that we don't actually have access to that much time in the lab in person, uh, and that's because you know we're all high schoolers and we've got high school to go through and we've all got a ton of homework because we're mm -hmm. all going to a magnet school. Um, but like what everyone basically everyone at the club has done is like outside of lab hours, everyone puts in overtime hours. Like this is like you know completely like a standard thing. Like I don't I can't think of a single person in our club right now who hasn't done that. And like, it's because like, that's just a part of who we are, right? We're, we're, we're a club of people who want to work on things, right? We're a club of people who choose to work on things over all the other stuff that we could be doing in that time. Right? It's like having a social life. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> like all the other things I that mean, we could be doing. I mean, at a certain point, like this is your social life, right? Like, yeah, this exactly. Becomes, exactly. We, this we, becomes yeah. your group of friends. This becomes the people you hang with. We are all hang extremely, out extremely good friends. Like we meet like basically every single lunch and like these meetings don't have much technical purpose except on those last minute situations <laughs> where we really need to get something done. <laughs> it's literally just time for us to chill and like hang out and, you know, talk about stuff. So for sure. There was one thing you were going to tell these guys about running the program in their schools, running their club, running their, their little team, their project, whatever you want to call it, on that sort of 
team project management -y sort of side of things, what one bit of advice would you give us to take home? What one thing do you kind of reckon would be good to know before you get started? You might get bogged down in the sort of like technicalities and details of the logistics of everything. There's a lot of stuff to organize. And usually, at least for us, they don't always get organized. Um, <laughs> yeah. But like at the same time, that's not, I personally feel that that's fine because the most important thing is having ourselves in the sort of mood to do things and having that culture be so tight, right? And so I think it's okay that we don't think too much about like the hard, cold like logistics and we focus more on bonding together as a team. And so I think if you feel, you know, that you're sort of sacrificing like some of like your, your thing is not as well run as you like, but you also like just love being there, you're doing it right, right? Like it doesn't matter that you're doing stuff less efficiently than you can be. Uh, my, my number one advice is to do what works for you. Cause like, in my opinion, all of the CubeSat programs we interviewed are successful because those students are learning skills that they, uh, that are going to be incredibly useful for them in the future. Like they're learning how to be engineers, you know? Yeah. And like results aside, like, you know, how like, you know, real the accomplishment is aside or like, you know, whatever else you want to call it. I don't really know if any of that actually matters. Like, I think that if you have a program and like, you know, you're wanting to start something, you know, pick a project that fits your needs, right? You know, if you need, if you have access to all of the mentors, if you have access to a university partnership, absolutely go for it, you know? If you want to use satellite kits to make your life easier and make the launches go around faster, go for it. You know, there's absolutely no shame in doing that. And I guess one thing I want to say is don't be afraid to learn new things. I think a lot of stuff with satellites is very intimidating uh, at first when you look at the kind of things that other, uh, like what that goes into building a satellite, being able to have the foresight of all this design and everything like that. And I think my best advice for that is to like just completely forget about that fear and just just try to learn it. Like it's tough and it it seems like a very, very hard task, but with the help of others, it's almost always doable. You always have mentors you can ask, you have friends you can work on. Uh, the community of my satellite pro our, our satellite program has been very, very helpful with this, and I think building a culture of a club definitely helps with learning this stuff. But I guess my advice is don't be afraid to learn really, really hard things, and you'd be surprised how close this is to your reach.